Yo, what's up, fam? This is your boy Blaze Holla coming at you again with another What If, and this time I'm bringing you What If Deku Was the Monkey King Part 2. I just want to give a quick shout out to my editor Ed for coming back from his vacation so he can start editing these amazing videos for all of you. So, with all that said, let's start that intro and get into it. Nine months have passed of grueling training, or at least that's what a normal person would say, but Izuku would just say it as a regular warm-up for him every day. As he continued to try to push himself during the time he got better with his staff and better manipulation over his thundercloud, but the biggest thing that surprised is when he woke up this morning finding a special outfit folded on his desk. Izuku got up, realizing that it looked like some kind of armor, but it seemed to be nothing but fabric as he was confused that things sprung to life as it clung onto him. What the hell, this thing is alive? Izuku struggled a little bit, trying to get the it off him as he noticed that a note fell to the ground and then he stopped realizing that the armor wasn't trying to harm him as he grabbed onto the note and it said one thing and one thing only armor of a true war god I just keep on getting more and more justification and being seen as a god but i guess i'll be grateful for the gift especially since the entrance exam is later today but i should get going if i keep her waiting any longer i'll get the endless lecture of my life Dooku quickly get ready as he realized the armor that he was wearing disappeared but it felt like it was still on him as he ignored it he grabbed his bag and started heading to the beach to meet up with Momo and All Might. It took him about five minutes to get there, but as he lands on the beach, he realizes that the both of them are in the middle of a conversation as he walks up. Sorry I'm late, I was given a new gift by a mysterious benefactor and it took some time to figure out how it worked. All Might was confused while also a little bit concerned about that statement. A mysterious benefactor, my boy, did that benefactor happen to give you a name? Izuku pulled out the note that came with the clothes as he looked it up and down and back and front. No name, all it says is armor of a true war god. Momo's eyes shot open as she just started to fear wondering if he's been given back his true armor can we actually see this armor izuku izuku shrugged revealing his armor showing that he had tan fingerless gloves with a black open like shirt that seemed to be made out of leather along with that black jacket having a gold trimming around the edge of it as he had a leopard padded belt wrapped around his waist and a red sash on top of it but also allowing him to keep his blue jeans along with getting tan combat boots at a silver like ankle bracelet it's kind of weird if i was to tell anybody that this was armor they would probably laugh because it doesn't look like armor. Momo had an extreme look of depression on her face, hoping that that armor would never show itself ever again. One of my worst fears has come true. You have all of your treasures, and your strength is going to go through the roof along with your defense. Now all that you're missing is your gourd. Once you have that, you'll be completely unstoppable, and no one will be able to trifle with you ever again. All Might gets intrigued by that statement, wondering if it just takes some interesting clothing to get that much more powerful. Well, if that's the case, why don't we throw hands for a little bit, Izuku, before the entrance exam? I'll make sure that it's a very light spar. Momo went pale hearing this insane idea. All Might, sir, I really don't think that's a good idea. Izuku was smiling as he was getting ready into his battle stance. Don't hold back, it doesn't matter if you injure me, I will still get the highest score in the entrance exam, even if it means I have to hold my staff in my teeth. All Might shuddered at the idea of Izuku's ferocity and first through a battle. Don't worry, like I said, we're just going to test our strengths a little bit, no need to go over the edge. Izuku just smiled as he was ready for battle and anything that came his way. Then come at me, the first strike will be all yours, All Might. All Might didn't even hesitate as he charged forward, giving a Detroit smash, but what surprised him that Izuku wasn't even moving an inch as a punch collided with his chest. But it's like all the kinetic force just disappeared, showing that the boy did not even move an inch. Izuku just had a sad look on his face as he punched All Might right across the face, sending him tumbling into the sand. I told you not to hold back. I want to test this armor and maybe for even a second feel excitement for dealing with this situation like this. All Might shook his head as he spit out a little bit of blood from his mouth as he was surprised to take such a heavy blow as he got back onto his feet. Easy, young man. This is supposed to be a fun little spar. No need to go for killing blows. If I was any less experienced, that strike would have actually killed me. Izuku just had an extremely annoyed look on his face. You act as though I care. Your strength is abysmal to mind that your generation is running out of time getting ready to retire. You better sit down soon so a more qualified person can take your seat. All Might was a little bit worried about that statement. Then I guess it's time I truly show you what it means to not only be a symbol of peace, but the strongest hero in the world world.
world. Momo got concerned from where this was going to head as she ran into the middle of the buff and I'm holding her arms out trying to get them to stop. Please, let's not cause any necessary scenes or damage to this area. You both are very powerful. He then turned to look Izuku dead in the eyes. Please, for me, will you stop the battle? He's not worth it. Izuku was a little bit annoyed as he looked back and forth between the both of them as he let out a sigh as his cloud showed up behind him as he sat down upon it. Uh, and I do not wish to dirty my hands with pointless blood anyway. Momo let out a sigh of relief as she placed one of her hands over her heart. Thank you. I truly do appreciate you stepping down from this pointless battle. All Might just calm down as he put on one of his signature smiles. Remarkable young Momo. You truly do have the instincts of a hero. I should have learned to better compose myself. Either way, the both of you should be making your way to UA for the entrance exam by now. Momo bows to All Might out of sign of respect and actual gratitude for the kind words that he's given. Thank you so much for the kind words, but I truly do believe that you are in control the entire time, but I do agree with what you've told us we should head out for the exam. Izuku floats over on his cloud, allowing it to grow big enough to fit two people. Hop on, Momo, we can talk along the way. Momo gets excited as she jumps onto the thundercloud holding on to Izuku. Just don't fly too fast, the last time I nearly fell off. All Might quickly gets in front of the thundercloud, holding up his hand, making sure that they don't go anywhere. Hold up, the both of you. Using your quirks like this is illegal since neither of you have your hero licenses yet. Izuku couldn't care less how All Might felt as he pulled out his staff and whacked All Might across the face, allowing them to dash off on top of the cloud. See you later, All Might. You can lecture us later when you're actually our teacher at UA. Both of them were flying over the city, heading over to UA as Momo was actually holding on to Izuku, a little bit concerned for how high they were. Izuku smiled as they went a little bit lower as they also slowed down so the wind speed wouldn't freak out Momo. Don't worry, we're going to be fine. Nimbus wouldn't let you fall and neither will I. Momo let go of him as she was chuckling a little bit. It's funny to think that 10 months ago you didn't even know Nimbus's name, but now you're acting like you've known it for years. Izuku had a look of joy while also scratching the back of his head. Well, yeah, since Nimbus Nimbus has been with me for years, at least from what my mom said since birth, I might as well act like I knew its name from the beginning even though I didn't. Momo just shook her head like she wasn't surprised to hear that statement. That's just like you, it doesn't matter even if you're being a little bit wrong or naive, you always just brush things off like nothing ever happened. Izuku tilted his head in confusion by that statement. There you go again, speaking like you've already gone through this entire process before, like you've known me for years. Yeah, we've only been hanging out for 10 months and it's confusing and I'm not enjoying that you keep on keeping secrets about me to yourself. Momo had a sad look on her face as she was just looking down at the city below. I keep my secrets for your protection. The more that I begin to trust you again, the more knowledge I'll give you. Izuku really didn't like Wing, but he didn't like the forcer as he just looked down realizing that they have arrived at their destination. Well, we're here. Hold on tight as I bring us down. As they landed in front of UA gates, everybody on the sidewalk quickly got out of the way surprised that they were coming off of a cloud. As they stepped onto solid ground, Izuku held Momo on trophy as she was standing and she walked next to him, but Momo was actually curious, wondering what Izuku would thought the exam was going to be like, since he decided not to research on the entrance exam except for when it's going to be. So, oh, I've been meaning to ask you ever since we met up, what do you expect the entrance exam to be like? Izuku thought about it for a minute as he started to smile, thinking about the most extreme test for the combat portion. Well, I know there's a written portion of the test which I can care less about, but when it comes down to the combat stuff, I hope that we're going to actually go up against the UA teaching staff to truly test our strength and maybe some of them actually did some research and knowledge on me so they actually give me a good hand-to-hand -hand battle. So yeah, to truly answer your question, I'm expecting a major fight in these mock cities that I've heard about. Momo had a sweat drop realizing that Izuku had big expectations for this exam but was about to be let down hard. And what happens if they don't live up to this expectation of the entrance exam that you want? Izuku just had a sour look on his face as he was thinking about that. Then it would be boring and I would want to get it over with quickly so I could find something more fun to do. They went into the auditorium to get the lecture about the entrance exam as they explained about the robot system and the points and even a little bit about the zero pointer that they should be running away from. Once the lecture was over, everybody was breaking up into groups to take their written exam real quick as once it was done, Izuku found himself in a mock city filled with a bunch of people that he couldn't care less about. While being disappointed, he's going to be fighting against a bunch of mechanical machines as he walked over towards the big door, pushing people out of the way, who tried to stop him. Once he was at the door, he turned around at everybody as he smacked his hands together making a loud echo as everybody gave him his attention. I am here to let you know that you're not going to be getting into the school this year. I do not want to have to handle dealing with you inside the city so stay outside or else I will keep you out by force. A boy with indigo hair seeming to be exhausted in a purple tracksuit stepped up to Izuku. What gives you the right to keeping us from going inside and how do you even know you have enough power to do so? Izuku
Dooku just rolled his eyes as he pulled out a few strands of his hair as he blew on them as ten clones appeared right in front of him seeming to be guarding the gate. Mortals like you truly do annoy me. I have power that goes way beyond any of your comprehension. The boy just seemed to get more agitated listening to Izuku talk down to him like he was some kind of god. First of all, my name is not mortal, it's Shinso, and I hate people like you who think that just because they have so much power they can get away with whatever they want. Izuku glared at Shinso as he reached into his ear and pulled out his staff as it grew to his height as he pointed at the boy's chest. Extend, Yaido. The staff extended as it slammed right into Shinso's chest, launching him right into the crowd of people while the staff actually shrunk back down into the size of a stick, placing it back into his ear. Make sure that you know your place or I'll continue just to beat you right back into it. After the entire incident, the gate to the testing site started to slowly open as usually applicants would be running through the door but they were afraid after they saw each clone had their own staff. Ready to attack while the original was walking inside after 10 minutes of walking trying to get to the center of the Moxie destroying robots along the way. Zuku finally got to the center of the Moxie as he just had a big smile on his face. Please show yourself Nimbus. The cloud appeared out of nowhere as it seemed to be circling around its master in extreme excitement. Calm yourself, this entire entrance exam is not worth you getting excited. It's time that you grew to with the size of the city and actually struck every machine down with your lightning bolt. Nimbus flew up into the air right above the city as it started to grow bigger and bigger and went from being a light color orange to a dark black with the roar of thunder could be heard inside of it. As it was waiting for the signal from Izuku who was waiting for a little bit longer for all the robots to get into their position in the center of town. Once he saw that all of them were into position he looked up and nodded at Nimbus who then let down a massive thunderbolt striking them all down. While other lightning bolts were taking down the entire testing site destroying every single machine in sight along with causing a lot of property damage. But in the end the entire city was still standing as a buzzer went off signaling that the entire testing site was done. Izuku had an annoyed look on his face as he just looked up and noticed that Nimbus was shrinking down and coming over to him as he hopped on and went to go find Momo. I was so disappointed by this. Hopefully that Momo is done with her test so she can entertain me. Meanwhile in the monitoring room all the judges were sitting in their chairs with their mouths wide open in shock not knowing what to say as nobody said a single word until Nezu spoke up breaking the silence. It looks like that one is going to be a handful. I might have to call him in so we can see what his intentions are. Razorhead was looking at the destruction of the city throughout the monitors as his eyes just were filled with concern. This one worries me. It seems like he doesn't care how much damage he does. All he wants to do is prove that he is the best. I might just cross his arm as he leaned back in his chair with a major grim look on his face. Be careful with that one, Nezu. He's been training with me over the summer and he has a complex that makes him think like he's a god and he has the ability and strength to back it up. Racer had listened to that with a skeptical look on his face as he dealt about the kid having a godlike complex. Gods don't bleed and I'm pretty sure that he was training with you for a while so he had to have been bleeding a lot. All Might had a grim look on his face like he really didn't want to say what he was about to but he needed to let the other staff members of UA know what was going on with Izuku. Throughout the entire time that Izuku and I have trained together through over the 10 months he has never actually once bled against me. He's actually made me bleed as I've been in the dirt more times than I want to admit. And to make me feel even worse, he usually looks like he's never got a scratch against me and he actually looks at me disappointed when the match is over. Everybody in the monitoring room was shocked and terrified of what could happen if Izuku went against Hero Society as they all turned to the monitors realizing that the boy had left for a different testing site on his cloud. They look over more of the cameras to realize that he's heading over for Group C's testing site for some weird reason. As we cut over to Izuku who decided to try to find Momo who was supposed to be in group C as a few minutes of watching other destroyed robots or get destroyed by them he finally comes across her as he goes flying down beside her as she was running. Finally I found you I was so bored because my test was so uneventful and nothing exciting happened whatsoever. Momo was startled and she nearly fell on her face but caught herself at the last second as she looked over at Izuku. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be a part of this test group. If you're done with your test you should have been waiting where we agreed upon. Izuku put one of his hands on his chin as he was thinking about what she just said. Oh yeah, I was supposed to wait by the front of the school for you. We talked about this yesterday. Well, whatever. I'm here. Don't you think you have enough points to pass anyway? You already have his power. Momo got back onto her feet as she faced Palm looking at Izuku. Just because you know what I've gone through doesn't mean I'm invincible like you. Remember, I'm still human. While the both of them were having their little back and forth debate, they hear a girl screaming as they turn their head to see the giant robot getting ready to crush down on a brunette as her leg was trapped under some rubble. Momo ran to go save her while Izuku pulled out his staff from his ear as he pointed it right at the zero pointer's head. Extend and expand, Yaido. Which makes it actually as long and as wide as a skyscraper, piercing right through the zero pointer's head, actually lifting
lifting it up into the air and then swinging and tearing its head right off and slamming its body into the ground, turning it into literal scrap metal all over the place. And this is a prime example of why fighting machines is no fun. Momo finished getting the girl out from underneath all the rubble as she watched all the scrap metal in the face of the zero pointer slam down into the ground below. Izuku, you weren't supposed to do that. You're not a part of this testing group, so you basically just ruined the entire entrance exam for this entire section. A buzzer goes off signaling that the entire entrance exam is over as everybody starts to group up and leave the testing site wondering what's going to happen now. As a joyful laugh could actually be heard echoing in the sky as everybody looks up to see the All Might's coming to crash down in a superhero pose in front of everyone. Young Izuku, I am here with a message from Principal Nezu who actually wants to talk to you about what you did during your entrance exam and seeing that your morals are in the right place. Izuku narrated his eyes, not happy with the idea of having to speak with the principal without even being a student yet. And I should go see him. Why shouldn't he be waiting for my first day of school if he wants to speak to me? I might just let out a joyful laugh as he actually let his teeth sparkle in the sunlight. Well, he said if you go, he has a surprise for you along with this conversation, so he needs you to go there, so please don't keep the principal waiting. Izuku just shook his head as he jumped onto his cloud, starting to head towards the main building of UA. This better be worth my time or else they're all going to regret wasting it. Momo just watched Izuku leave as she then turned to look at All Might. Can you tell me what the principal actually has for him because if it's actually not worth his time we might want to start running over there. All Might wanted to tell his predecessor but he didn't want to do it where someone could be watching them so he quickly grabbed onto her and leaped onto one of the buildings. After he landed he gently put her down. Sorry about that but if you must know the UA staff is truly terrified of Izuku and all the power he might have so we have to find a way to test him in a non-combat scenario to see what he's actually capable of. Momo just rolled her eyes, figuring that the staff was already freaking out after what she saw from the lightning bolts earlier. That's not what I'm worried about. You said that the principal has a surprise for him, so unless that gift is actually worth his time of him going all the way over there, your principal might be in danger. You should know what it means to make a promise to him, and it turns out it's not something that he wants. He easily gets irritated and will get upset with anybody who gets in his way. He might start to have a sweat drop as he realized that he lied about the surprise, but he knew it would be the only way to get Izuku to go talk to Principal Nezu without having any difficulty. Well, what if I said to you that I actually lied about there being a surprise and all he's doing is going to a meeting with the UA staff just to see if he's a threat to anybody and where his moral standings are with everything? What do you think he would do at that point in time? Momo's eyes shot open in horror as she started to grab onto All Might's hero suit and start shaking him around like a rag doll. Are you completely insane? Are you trying to get him to destroy all of UA and everybody within it? He's going to go ballistic when he finds out that you just tricked him. It only took Izuku five minutes to actually get back to campus and actually track down the principal's office. Upon arriving, he noticed that he wasn't the only person in the room. There was Eraserhead, Power Loader, 13, Midnight, and Black King sitting on the couch in the principal's office waiting for him. Izuku noticed a white bear-like mouse creature sitting on the desk with a plaque that said principal, which made him laugh so hard that it almost was inappropriate for his situation. You can't be serious. That little thing is the principal. He looks like something that you would put on the barbecue for summer. Nezu was just keeping his calm as he motioned for Izuku to take a seat on one of the empty couches. I'm sorry if I'm not exactly what you were expecting, but my size may appear that I'm cute and cuddly, but I'm actually a very intelligent creature. Izuku eventually took a seat as he started to calm down while still chuckling to himself a little bit. I don't doubt that you're intelligent. If you're sitting at that desk, technically you have to be the most smartest person in this room, but I'm more curious about the surprise that All Might said you had for me. Nezu was confused by that statement as he did not tell All Might anything like that, so he was wondering why the boy was questioning him about a surprise that didn't exist. I'm sorry to tell you, but I don't really have any gifts for you. I don't know why he would tell you something like that. The only thing I can tell you is that you've made it into the school with flying colors and you shattered the school record by leaps and bounds, but I do not actually have any physical gift for you. I'm very sorry. Zuku gets a very serious look on his face like he was pissed off with everybody in the room now. So you're saying that I was lied to and was brought to this meeting just to waste my time when I could be finding something more entertaining to do right now. Razorhead realized that the situation was about to escalate a whole bunch if he didn't step in as he started to activate his quirk to keep Izuku down. I would keep it calm kid, don't try to do anything stupid or else we will all tackle you to the ground and have you handcuffed. Izuku stood up as he let the staff fall out of his ear and into his palm as he then let it extend to be about his height as he was ready to fight. I don't know exactly what you're doing to make your hair levitate but it has no effect on me. Everyone in the room was completely shocked thinking that his quirk should be completely completely shut off, but it seems that it had no effect as Eraser was getting ready to grab his capture scarf, only for Nezu to take complete control of the situation and get everybody's attention before they do something stupid. What if I was able to talk with the committee to get you your hero license day 
one, but you would still have to go to school. Would that be okay with you, Izuku, for a gift? Izuku was completely intrigued by this proposal. Are you sure you want to give me that much power and authority over hero society? Ezu realized that he piqued the boy's interest, so he decided to run with it. It might take a little while to go through the committee, and there's no guarantee, but if you're willing to sit down and let us ask you a few questions, I can do everything within my power to get you your license as soon as possible. Izuku was completely intrigued by Nezu's proposal as he sat down putting his staff back into his ear as he was ready to listen. Alright you little furry creature, ask your question because you definitely have my curiosity piqued by how you're acting. But that's where I'm going to leave it off this time guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I know it's been a while since I've been on so I'm definitely going to try to get videos out more often but with all that said I'm definitely out. See you guys, bye!